Hello, everyone, and welcome back from the break. Uh, uh, let us thank for our sponsors first. InnoFactor, Knowit, Nitor, TalentBase, GoFora, and Ethicode. Thanks for making this uh, Scan Agile online series possible and, and free for us participants. And our next uh, speaker is going to talk about breaking the internal barriers for Accelerate. And that's uh, Padmini Nidomu. And then after her, we are going to have another break. And then we are going to have our final presentation, uh, Josh Dalbury, the agility of the Motown records, the keynote of today. Uh, and I think that's very exciting. As you know, uh, in Agile circles, we have always talked about inclusiveness and we have always talked about diversity. And uh, those are the two areas that uh, Padmini is actually going to talk with you about. So she's a she's an agile coach at Fannie Mae, and uh, she's working as an enterprise coach over there. So she's working with multiple portfolios, and she's an active speaker, uh, uh, speaking with various agile events, and and she's a true influencer. Uh, she has a family, and uh, she comes from Washington D.C. family with two kids, and she comes from Washington D.C. Some of her hobbies include gardening. And she also uh, loves to uh, do Indian dancing with her, with her daughter. So um, I think that I find that very fascinating. You know, uh, in Indian dancing, you actually tell stories with your hands. Um, but Padmini has a special character. So she has this uh, special capability on, on lifting other people. Uh, and uh, welcome, welcome Padmini to the stage. Welcome to Scan Agile to present today. We are very, uh, very excited to have you over here. So please, Badmini, join in the stage. Hey, Martin. Hi, Badmini. Hello, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And so great to see you. So, uh, Badmini, I'm just so curious. So how come you uh, came up to, with the idea of, of lifting other people uh, in such a way, kind of like uh, making it uh, almost like your life mission? Yeah, no, I think you said it right. And and uh, the answer is twofold, Marit. In fact, uh, I mean, you know, since the time I knew, I always had leadership qualities, right? I was self-motivated and self-organized. So which, which actually helped me become a leader, a natural leader. And from that emerged, uh, a huge desire to kind of lift somebody else, right? So when you go one step ahead or one step uh, above, you want to extend your hand to somebody who is trying to kind of, you know, climb the same mountain. So, um, and it gives me great gratification to kind of do so. And, um, it just serves the purpose, right? You know, where you want to be. So, yeah, it's, it's been a great ride. I would also like to express my gratitude towards you because uh, I think you have also had a great influence on my life, just uh, making me part of the uh, LIA 100 that we uh, will hear uh, in your presentation that has kind of also has an influence and changed my life also to the better. It's a great honor that you've said that, uh, Marit. You're a, you're a fantastic leader yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let, let us hear about your presentation and uh, maybe you can share your slides and we can see that those are, those are visible to everyone. Yeah, so let me go ahead. Let me know when you're ready. Yes. Can you just put them on the present and more? Yes, exactly. It's visible and I will go away now and have have a fun. Awesome. So can you still see my um, slides here? Okay. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the, in the world. It's early morning for me here. I'm based out of Washington, D.C., and it's about 8.30. Very excited to be part of Scan Agile series, online series, and, um, and I was so looking forward to this uh, event. 
Um, it would have been fantastic if it happened in person, but um, here we are, right? Online, virtual, but still together. We are sticking together. So um, very excited about this. My topic today is about breaking our internal barriers. And um, this is probably a, a touchy, feely subject and uh, often ignored because most of our challenges come from our internal barriers. And uh, there, are, there are so many talks and so many contexts that are shared in the conferences and summit about um, the content or um, the concepts or themes of Agile and Lean. But my focus always has been how can we uplift ourselves so it enables uplifting somebody else, right, in your ecosystem. So I've been focusing on that and the mission of the organization that I co-founded, Lean and Agile for Women, is exactly that, to break your internal barriers and also to support, to offer and seek from the community that you have formed for yourself. So I want to kind of, um, you know, focus on that. And um, I would say a disclaimer is um, this is applicable to anybody, right, any gender, but Lean and Agile for Women is, is also um, a, a focused mission on women because we understand that they probably uh, harbor more internal barriers and assume more barriers than men do. Uh, but again, this presentation is for everyone because we need men as our allies because you are our spouses, you are our colleagues, you are our hiring managers. So it helps for you to understand what barriers women are fighting so you can help them and you can enable them better. So uh, let me take you through this journey and uh, please feel free to note any questions or comments you might have and I'll be happy to address them right after this. So uh, let's, let's address you know, what are barriers? And we hear this term quite a bit, right? It's a very common word that we, that we uh, you know, hear or uh, kind of, you know, uh, read. So let's talk about what barriers are. So barrier is, you know, by definition, any obstruction, it could be internal or external that prevents acceleration forward, right? Acceleration is moving forward. It could be impeding your growth or flow and flow being the fundamental aspect of Agile and Lean anyway. And we know that the basic principle of Agile and being Lean is clearing the way for productivity to flow unobstructed because flow is the fundamental aspect of being Lean, right? Uh, without any obstructions. But barrier stands right between you and the flow and acceleration that you've always wanted. And uh, how does this barrier really form? Uh, in fact, when you become plagued with you know, fear or apprehension or self-doubt, that fear creates a barrier and, and that prevents you to take the next step in your journey, right? And that can really frustrate you. It can cripple you, it daunts you, and, and it crushes you in every capacity. And it creates a sense of, um, no direction or a loss of direction and futility. And what it also does, it narrows your focus, right? In a, in a negative way. You do want a very sharp focus in, in the work that you want to do, but this actually limits your focus. And that wide lens kind of disappears and blurs. And it clearly reflects in your ability to connect with others, communicate with others, influence your ecosystem, and execute your tasks to your satisfaction, right? And the worst part is internal barriers do not just stop with you. It shows in the way and it adversely impacts your ecosystem. It could be your, um, you know, the company you work uh, in the um, family you interact with or, you know, your colleagues or even your community, right? Your agile community, your lean communities. So when you meet a person who's struggling with internal barriers, it shows right away, doesn't it? Right, you know that, you know, clearly when you see a man or a woman who's struggling with internal barriers, they don't have to mention. You just know that they're struggling with something. They're grappling with some challenge. But when you know a woman or um, a man who had conquered it successfully, it shows as well. And these are the women that we talk about. She's confident. She's um, self-reliant. She's energetic. She's influential because they have, they have addressed the internal barriers, right? 
even if it's not completely, at least to some extent. And another um, metaphor that I can think of for barriers is like barriers are like concrete walls, right? That granite walls that you see. And the walls, these walls are built by ourselves. And what we do every single day is we run and we charge at full speed at these concrete walls because you're dealing with them every single day. And obviously when you run into them, you fall down, you crash down. Well, you get up and you start running at them again the very next day, right? Nothing has changed between yesterday and today because you haven't addressed it. And, you know, this is an incredible waste of energy, time, and your emotions because you're every single day running through this concrete wall, hitting and falling, hitting and falling. So a smart way would be to address it. And, and because every time you hit this wall, you experience pain, despair, and a sense of failure, which compounds by each day. So you need to identify these barriers. Nobody else will for you. And the foremost thing that you need to do is to acknowledge them. Yes, I do have this internal barrier. I'm suffering with this. And break them into smaller pieces, like decompose them into smaller pieces. Just like in, in Agile, uh, you know, uh, uh, Agile product, you break down the product vision into multiple features, multiple epics, multiple capabilities, and you work on each of them. You essentially don't handle the entire product on day one, right? We iterate, and that's what our squads do. So this is no different, right? Treated the Agile way, iterated the Agile way. And um, in fact, these walls or these barriers are built by you, so only you can break them down. So these are the fears that live within their own walls. That's another um, you know, uh, context that we need to have while looking at the barriers. So um, let's look at you know, the, the uh, barriers themselves, right? Not all barriers are, are uh, conceptualized or created by you. There are internal and external barriers. As I'm showing on the screen here, it, it helps for you to recognize what external barriers are because you might have little or no control over them. But you also need to know what internal barriers are, the variety of them. So if you look at external barriers, if it's pre-selection or pre-selection as in, you know, somebody has already been selected for the role or for the task that you wanted to do, right? This is the, the unconscious bias. Uh, lack of diverse pool of applicants and there is a pay gap between men and women or limited leadership roles for women because it's assumed all the time that, you know, men are better leaders of unfortunately, and there is stereotyping. And um, of course, glass ceilings, glass cliff, cliffs always exist in any organization you go. But if you really wanna look at the internal barriers, these are the fears we talked about. It's your own confidence gap that you've created for yourself. And the imposter syndrome, right? And a fixed mindset versus growth mindset and short-term thinking, not looking at the long-term consequences of what you're doing today. These are all the barriers that we have created for ourselves. And if, if you really look at it, it will be possible if, if you want to raise or uh, uplift yourself from the platform that you have stopped yourself at. So let's look at um, you know, some of those aspects and, and um, go from there. So if you look at these internal barriers, right? You know, and then some of these I've, I've actually mentioned in the previous slide. But let's face it, breaking internal barriers is probably one of the hardest tasks to take on. Let's make no mistake, right? Because it is, it is the hardest thing to do. If it was easy, all of us would have addressed it. But this requires a huge mindset shift, your own mindset shift, right? Uh, and that, that mindset is the winning mindset. And that mindset shift begins with self-confidence and a sense of balance and and also let's face it that at some point in this journey or this this um you know this process failure is inevitable a small failure a big failure you will fail because you're you're on a journey and you will not have all the successes and it happens to all of us at some point but it needs to be a uh, 
the failure needs to be a tool to help you learn and improve. So real failure is when you let these barriers break you down completely before you break them down. That's the actual failure. But if you, if you experience smaller failures, a stepping stone kind of a failure, that's totally okay. And, and also many times we make the mistake of attributing the barriers to external factors for influence, right? And, and question yourself when you, are, or when you embark on this journey, who is creating these barriers, right? It could be a short-term thinking, it could be risk-taking variances, or, you know, I'm not good enough kind of a barrier. Who's creating these? It's often you, right? Yes, there are external influences, but it's often you who's creating this. And if you are aligned, you can better contribute to your organization. And that is what we all call an engaged workplace. When all the employees are able to effectively address their internal barriers, you'll have a more engaged workspace because now you have more brain power and less mental clutter. So because you're bringing your whole self to work, you're not grappling with anything else. So think about it. When you address your internal barriers, you're not just helping yourself, but you're also helping and aiding the organization growth along with it because you belong to the organization. So let's talk about, um, you know, why should you care about internal barriers, right? Let's break this a little bit further down. And why should we care about these barriers? And why is it important to address them sooner than, sooner than later? Because we all assume we have a lot of time. And we should care because these are caused by some kind of fear. And it could be fear of failure or fear of job loss, fear of um, being not good enough in, in, in your life, or fear of being judged, because we are all fearing being judged all the time. And this fear forces you to protect yourself by creating an artificial um, protective um, scaffolding, if you will, right? This creates imbalance and harms other aspects of your well-being and prevents you from being completely present because you're not present because you're grappling with something else. And these barriers might seem uh, insurmountable, right? When you first look at them, just like when you want to create a product, the product looks pretty huge and it, it, it seems impossible to create it, to build it, but they're not. They were built internally and they can be destroyed internally and they're built by you, so only you can destroy them, right? So we're familiar with how Fear destroys companies, you know, huge organizations from inside out, let alone individuals. Often biggest threat um, for an organization is not structural or competition. It is internal. So if you if you draw a metaphor between an individual and organization, that's what it is. And um, also barrier removals, right? You know, it, it doesn't, it, it does cause some short term pain. Uh, again, let's be very uh, realistic, right? And it, it causes some discomfort because you're swimming against the tide. But it makes your productivity flow much faster and better than it's actually at risk. So because internal barriers have the capacity to kill your enthusiasm and energy, when you remove them, there is a free, free flow of energy and free flow of enthusiasm, which is much required for your organizations anyway. And also acknowledge that the barrier that you're struggling with is valid, right? But there will be a better way to break it without creating, uh, uh, we call it expensive collateral damage or collateral impact. I think we're all familiar with, you don't deal with certain challenge in your organization, there is bound to be a collateral damage. And often we don't account for it, but that's that's the uh, crux of this, right? So, yes, it is valid, but there will be a way out without causing as much impact or angst within you. And um, this is something that I usually do uh, very often with my um, leadership or with my squads, um, uh, and especially when um, there is a challenge at hand, where, when there is a problem solving need at hand, I make leaders and my team members do this exercise. It's a very simple exercise. Ask them to list all the barriers, right? 
and uh, ask them to categorize them into, do you think it is structural or internal? If it is structural, you can form a council, you can form a committee to address it. But if it's internal, that's when each of these people um, you know, need help, support, and coaching. Um, and I found this to be extremely profound, very impactful. It's a very simple exercise. It's just a one sheet exercise, but the conversations and the um, uh, the co-creation of the solution that comes out of it is is pretty powerful. So highly recommend this in case you um, you would like to um, you know do this for yourself. So let's look at these breaking internal barriers, right? And um, let's look at the uh, the how part of it. And um, if you look at the how, first and foremost, you need to identify who your courage killers are or what your courage killers are, right? Because busting the barriers need identifying and acknowledging what is impeding your progress very actively, right? And the effort of breaking barriers can be regained many times over and over when the walls are finally torn down. And that's just not a signal of success, but that's the real nirvana moment for you, right? That's the real triumph. So you need to identify this, you know, for yourself. And um, if you're looking at tools, right, you know, how do you in fact start and end? And, and this is a, a framework that I often suggest and, and, and um, uh, you know, even uh, I have, I've in fact adopted this for myself and I coach my teams, I train them and, you know, we adopted this on, on a large scale are the mindset tools, right? You're talking about having the courage to solve for it, commitment to stick with it, persistent to ensure that no matter what happens, you're persistent till the barrier is, is uh, dissolved, and accountability. And uh, this is self-accountability, right? You can have an accountability partner, but essentially it, it is your self-accountability that eventually wins uh, anything that you really set out for yourself as a goal. So if you look at, um, you know, the first quadrant here, right, which is the courage, we all know that removing barriers internal or external requires tremendous amount of courage, right? Courage to look within. And how many of us have the courage to look within? Very few of us. Acknowledge it. Yes, I do. I do um, grapple with this. And being willing to break them down. Right. These are the three aspects. First, look within, acknowledge that you struggle with it and being willing to break them down. And without this, you just can't take the first step. Right. Let's face it. And the next one is commitment and a strong commitment to um, iterate through the process because you're bound to fail. Go back, iterate it till you get to a point of self-serving. And also retrospect on the process and results very often, no different from, uh, you know, you iterating on your product vision with your squads. So have that commitment and then you persist, right? Because short term pain is inevitable. And how do you persist through that pain? Because we as human beings, we resist change. We resist going out of our comfort zone. So persist until the change occurs don't give it up and because if value removal is done properly the benefits to you can be dramatic you're the direct beneficiary of that result so again this doesn't mean that you can change your course of action at all yes you you pivot mercilessly if you're not familiar with that statement if something is not working pivot and, and then you know take a different course of action but you are persisting alignment with your own North Star. A North Star might be uh, you know, shifting according to uh, different situations, but you're going to persist. And finally, the accountability simply means that you value what you're committed to. So uh, when this is done right, your confidence obviously skyrockets because you're seeing the results for yourself. And um, if you if you think about this from a gender lens, and that's why I started, this could be apply to anybody, but, uh, you know, this conversation is going to focus on, um, you know, the inclusion, right, from a gender lens. And women often have to fight these internal barriers harder. It could be because of, a, you know, society uh, or a social narrative or 
uh, it's the culture, it's patriarchal culture, men dominating culture, it could be any of those. But women often have to fight this very harder. And as women, we are fighting gender stereotypes all the time, societal expectations, oppression at, um, at the home front or in, in, in society, limited growth, limited leadership growth for women, which we are all familiar with, right? If, if there are, um, you know, often candidates from both genders, you know, most of the top leadership positions often favor men for different reasons again. But um, again, it's the workplace culture you work in, it's discrimination and unconscious bias, sexism, and many more, right? So um, as, as uh, you know, I was introduced earlier on before this talk, I'm the co-founder of a movement called Lean and Agile for Women. And, uh, you know, this, this movement is designed to enable diversity, inclusion, and adaptability. It's also designed to help women reach their fullest potential. And it is, it is a space for women to co-create a vision and execute through collaboration. So this organization that I co-founded uh, in 2018, um, we call um, all the Agile and Lean organizations to be inclusive and diverse in thought leadership or workforce and bringing women to the decision-making tables very consciously and very actively. And um, this community, Lean and Agile community, um, the community building is, is very strong at the core. It is a, 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 a not-for-profit organization. It's not a commercial organization. It's a no subscription organization. It is for the community, by the community, and of the community in, in the truest sense. And, and the premise of this is we all know agile and lean principles place adaptability and growth mindsets um, at the, you know, as essential to actualizing um, agility within individuals. But the problem always has been, how do we put these concepts into action? And how can we bring diverse perspectives and, um, you know, less represented views into the transformation spaces? That's been our, our uh, struggle from the get-go, right? There's, the concept was always out there, let's be inclusive, but how do we do it? How do we bring these women who are struggling to find their voices and struggling to find support system? How do we bring them together? And most importantly, how do we create a space where women can be vulnerable? Women can say, hey, I need help, raise their hands. How do we enable that? And that's the crux of Lean and Agile, uh, you know, for women, uh, you know, the, the organization that we co-founded. And if you look at this, um, this structure here, we call it the House of Leah. Uh, or Lean and Agile, Leah is short form of Lean and Agile, but this, these are the founding pillars of our house, right? And, and the founding uh, pillars are spirals. So we do have a space that I was just talking about that we create for women every month. It could be every week. It's completely up to you. Anybody can start these spirals, by the way. If anybody's interested in Finland, Helsinki area, anywhere, we'll be uh, more than happy to bring this to you. But spirals are a group of women who come together um, on a cadence and, and they, um, they support each other. They offer what they can to the group. And they also say, hey, I need this from the group. So the concept is, stick as a group and together as a group, you will travel much faster and much more stronger than you were uh, if you were to be you know, um, alone. So uh, we, we have had um, many spirals kicked off in the recent past. We have spirals in Asia, Europe, US, and another one starting up in Africa. And uh, we typically uh, need somebody to lead it, but it, we give the content to you, material to you, we enable you and, and then you stick as a group. It's a very, very powerful concept. And many women have come out with um, strong, uh, you know, concepts and um, they were able to talk in conferences and whatnot. So spirals are the foundational block of Leah. And her story is Leah 100, uh, Lean and Agile 100. This is my um, uh, project, very close to my heart. Uh, I have identified 100 people based on the nominations from across the world. We have asked the communities to nominate women. And um, by the way, Marat Lanti, 
uh, who's the co-organizer of this event as one of the LEA 100 women and I interviewed personally and um, you know, we brought her story to the community and there was a huge um, impact uh, about her story and how she kind of emerged as a leader. So her story is all about those 100 women from across the world. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see all these stories in the form of interviews. Next gen, we are bringing the next generation of girls, young girls, high school girls and young working professionals and instilling agile and lean mindset into them sooner than later and bringing them into the workforce sooner than later. And finally, WIP is not the WIP we know. It's not work in progress, but it is the Women Inclusion Pledge. We want organizations and conferences to pledge that they will include women in everything they do, on the decision-making tables, and also be intentional about creating spaces for women. So these four are the pillars of LEA. And again, very happy to invite any of you uh, who are interested into this movement. It's a much required movement for us at this point. So spirals, I just talked about it. If anybody anywhere in the world are interested in creating the spirals, please contact us. And uh, this is about raising the floor for each other, for the women that uh, you, know, you are part of. So this is about learning and growing together. It's a very mutually reinforcing support structure to help overcome your internalized beliefs, barriers, and behaviors. And uh, of course, the structural realignment of the organization is imperative and it has to happen. But spirals can help uh, women be better equipped, not only to survive, but also thrive. So success can be actualized in the organizations. Um, so the other three foundational pillars that, uh, that are very important for business agility, talking about inclusion, are um, you know looking at uh, the women inclusion pledge that I just talked about. It's not just for organizations, but also for conferences. Many women have a great story to share, but they're very apprehensive to present themselves on the stage. They're apprehensive to even put in a proposal because they think they're good, not good enough. So we want conferences to create intentional space for women to come in and speak. They could be first time speakers, they could be novice speakers, but create that space and say, hey, we have 50% of the slots for women. You'll be surprised how many women will come and contribute. And uh, there are great women speakers, great stories. So please create those spaces and conferences and summits, right? And also, most importantly, we promote women at decision making tables. It could be your organizing, it could be your strategy making, it could be anything. When you have a decision making happening, please, please include women because they bring in different perspectives and valuable perspectives. And of course, um, all these contribute towards business agility, right? In, in the truest sense to ensure, you know, it, it happens. Offer Seek is another uh, huge aspect of uh, our uh, Lean and Agile. We encourage women to offer to the group and seek from the group. And this is a sample of Offer Seek board. As you can see, it's a simple Trello board, and it is categorized by self-care or for fun or productivity hacks or coaching and mentoring, domain knowledge, whatever it is, however you want to organize. But as you can see, you know, these are the offerings that are being made by different women in the group. They say, hey, I can do, I can coach you on lead practices or I can give you Salesforce guidance. And uh, the different pictures that you're seeing here are the women who have self-called for help. So they go into the card, this particular card, and they put their name on it, and the offer, uh, the woman who's offering will contact that person, and they both kind of um, you know, get together and make this happen uh, so they can learn from each other. Very simple, but very effective. Again, we are here to help you if you want to start something like this in your space. I want to quickly um, take you through personal board of directors. And um, again, I want to be very mindful of the time. Um, you know, I think I have about a few minutes left. But, um, you know, personal board of directors, again, is a very powerful concept. We want you as women to form a, a personal board of directors for yourself, right? believe that you need um you know in fact let me show you that uh, and of course creating trust and relationships is is the form is the basis of being you but what we want to really you know emphasize on create a team for yourself you have to advocate for yourself 
identify a coach, identify a mentor, a counselor, a reviewer, a subject matter expert. These could be women beside you. You know, they could be your leaders, your managers, your friends across the country, whoever it is, right? Identify these people in your life intentional be intentional about reaching out to them and say hey um you know for example if i go to marit and say hey marit i would like you to be my coach and maybe i'll come to you when i have a coaching question it could be 10 minutes it could be 30 minutes would you be willing to be my coach you'll be surprised how many people will say yes right we are apprehensive to ask but ask and and marit will be more than happy to coach me but I have recruited Marit as my coach. And I know that when I call her, she would be willing to uh, you know, coach me on that particular context or that scenario. Similarly, a mentor, counselor, a reviewer, you, they could review your work, your presentations, whatever it is, and uh, you know, subject matter experts. But form a team you. These are your own board of directors that you can reach out to in time, in the time of apprehension or fear or whatever. But together, we can make this happen and make it much stronger. But, um, you know, make a team for yourself. And these are the people who will root for you, who will want to see you succeed. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, Scan Agile. And uh, again, we here at Lean and Agile are always looking forward to uplift women across the world. So please reach out if you would like to, uh, you know, get involved. And uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Padmini. That was a very important and interesting topic. We have lots of questions for you. So, uh, first of all, saying it's a very important topic. And can you share a personal example of breaking an internal barrier? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, um, you know, um, one of my dreams in my life was to present uh, my thoughts at a TEDx talk, right? That was my bucket list, like everybody else, uh, have a bucket list. And I never thought I was good enough to put my thoughts on, on a TEDx stage, right? Because um, that was a fear I built within myself. And I struggled with it. I grappled with it. I, I talked to so many people I know. And everybody said, it's a big stage. It's a big platform. you you got to be this. You have to do this in order to be on a TEDx stage. So uh, just like a product vision, I broke it down, right? You know, what is what is really bothering me? Is it the fear of public speaking? It is the fear of that big stage. It is the fear of staying on TEDx platform for a long time because they're all recorded. So I really went through each of them and addressed each of them. I had a mentor for each of those topics, believe it or not. But, um, you know, these mentors really, uh, you know, helped me to, um, to ensure that I am um, breaking that barrier effectively and finally, I got onto not just one TEDx stage, two TEDx stages. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is a huge barrier I built for myself, but I broke it down. And with the help of my mentors, I was able to do it. Again, you know, huge credit to the mentors that I've interacted with. Great, great example. What about the organizational barriers or barriers within an organization? Can you give us an example of Absolutely. an organizational barrier that was broken absolutely so um in fact as an enterprise agile coach that's what i do right you know i coach um the coaches and the scrum masters and the leaders to kind of uh, first identify the organizational barriers and then address them i think one of the huge barriers that you know any coach would agree with me is the leaders who are behind agile principles and transformations as a lip service but not as a true uh, conviction or a belief that they want to really transform their organization into agile ways of working. And um, one of the things that I always trusted work was when I had the opportunity to influence leadership, I don't go with a, a blanket statement of let's transform your organization into agile, but take a small part of what they're struggling with, what their challenges are, and with the help of your cohort, help them go over that hump, help them go over that problem, show very small, very iterative success, and you can bind their confidence, right? 
So any organizational barrier, look at it as a you know huge backlog of things to do, break it down and take one by one because iterative success shows more value than a big bang success after six months. Hmm. What would you suggest would be an empathic, em, uh, kind of if you want to approach these barriers with empathy, what, what kind of ways uh, do you find more empathic to raise barriers or take so, those into discussions? Yeah, you know, personally, Marit, uh, I have always trusted the basic agile principle, right? Individuals, interactions over processes and tools. I'm a very uh, interactive person. I trust human relationships to work better than anything else. And um, I think that human to human connection in the organization and less emphasis on tools and um, in other practices we have, but focus more on individuals, right? Mm. How can we inspire them, motivate them? How can we help them overcome their own barriers? So we all can become a stronger cohort. Extremely important. I've always relied on it, always had success with it. Mm. Sometimes we feel that these barriers they may be kind of invisible. So how do you how do you detect actually these invisible barriers? Right. In fact, um, you know, I I presented on invisible barriers, visible barriers, and invisible barriers. In fact, if you if you visualize that as a iceberg, right, the tip of the iceberg is actually very small. There is a huge invisible iceberg under the water. I call that invisible barrier, right? And again. Identifying invisible barriers does not happen overnight. It requires a lot of analysis, a lot of studying, a lot of interactions, both with leadership and the workforce to understand where the obstruction of flow of productivity, energy, and communications is happening. And in those conversations, in those um, you know uh, chatter that you hear, you know the sound bites, you see the internal barriers. And again, I personally do interviews when I go into a new space or a new organization. Interviews are simple ways of conversing. And you know, that that's how you uncover those invisible barriers through any conversations. Any barriers that you have find kind of dangerous to destroy? Absolutely. Have you found any? Uh, I think the most dangerous barrier that you can see is the command and control attitude of leadership, the patriarchal attitude of leadership. Um, do it because I said so, right? Or I'm your servant leader, so now go do as I say, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the servant leadership as a lip service, the most dangerous barrier because it's not obvious. As you said, it's an invisible barrier, right? So at, at the forefront, they, they talk as champions of um, you know, transformation, but internally, they, they are not convinced. The conviction is something else. That, to me, is the most dangerous thing to battle because you can't wake up somebody uh, who is you know, not sleeping. They're pretending to be sleeping. So that's the biggest barrier, I think. Do you know if there is any... Uh this kind of spiral, Leah, spiral in Europe? Yes. In fact, we just launched a UK spiral and we have two catalysts. We call them catalysts, right? They're the leaders in the area. We just launched it and uh, one in Vienna is coming up and we were just approached by somebody in Romania. So, uh, you know, that that will be interesting. But uh, again, because this is a non-commercial organization, it's a community organization, and there is a fantastic uh, underlying message here. So, um, you know, it would be fantastic to have one in Finland going. Definitely. So, Padmini, I would like to really thank you. So, uh, you have really started an international community that has a clear impact. So, I think that's very inspiring. And uh, next, we are going to have a break.